would not give to us. So for those who are saying Tinubu is now president, uh, it's time for Yoruba people to stop agitation, agitation and come into the Nigerian fold. I will say the train is passed. We are no longer a part of one Nigeria. And I think that statement has been said a million times now. So for those who are saying, what is the way forward? I would say that the way forward is we have not shifted our ground and we are moving even faster than we have been since 2018. And I know for a fact that very soon, and sooner, than late, sooner rather than later, the Yoruba nation will sit among the committee of nations. A people of over 50 million in one geographical location and over 100 million across the world must have their own representation and representatives in the world center stage. And we cannot cede that to Nigeria. And that is what uh, Nigeria took from us. And for those who are asking that uh, without referendum, the Yoruba cannot go. Yes, we can go. And I will tell you what Lugard uh, said. Now, when Lugard and uh, his cohorts in the 1914s and things were saying about uh, freeing slaves, freeing this, this is what Lugard wrote in his uh, article, in his uh, uh, report in 1919, page 43. Slavery and free labor. Slavery in northern provinces. I cannot hear deal at any length. I'm, quote, I'm reading from what Lugard wrote. I cannot hear deal at any length with the subject of slavery, but the question of labor supply so intimately affects the development of Nigeria that a few words regarding it would be out of place. It was mentioned in paragraph 2 that in 1900, when the amalgamation of Northern Nigeria reverted from the Chartered Company to the Crown, large armies led by Fulani chiefs annually raided for slaves and had depopulated the country with the conquest of the Muslim states. These organized raids, listen, you know, organized raids, so they were already doing it indiscriminately. Going to a war was organized. Going to Sasha was organized. Going to Barakpa was organized. Going to Igogon was organized. Going to Yewa was organized. Had power to assert this organized raid uh, led by Fulani chiefs annually raided for slave and had depopulated the country. With the conquest of the Muslim state, these organized raids were put to an end by the ab abolition of the legal status of slavery. A slave had power to assert his freedom. It was not, listen to what uh, Lugard, it was not, however, illegal to possess a slave, but the status was a voluntary one. So we continuing in Nigeria will mean that we have acquiesced, which the Yoruba people have not. All children born after March 31st, 1901, we are free at birth. So that means before then, if they born you in the north, if your parents were slave, then you are automatically slaves. And that's what they are turning the whole of Nigeria into today. The sudden abolition of the institution, and this is the most important bit, the second uh, bit of his uh, statement. The sudden abolition of the institution of domestic slavery would have produced social chaos. So, they have abolished it, but they are not going to tell the people they are free. It's the same thing they want us to do. We've got our Yoruba nation, but they don't want us to say we have gone. But we have gone. We, Yoruba is no longer part of Nigeria. And the wholesale assertion of their freedom. So, if every Yoruba come out tomorrow and say, we are Yoruba, we are no longer part of Nigeria. This is what Lugard was saying then, that if the Northerners did this in 1901, it would be chaos for them, especially for the Northern chiefs. The wholesale assertion of their freedom by slave was therefore discouraged. So what, what is the United Nations doing? What is the United Kingdom doing? What is the United States doing? Look at the three United. 
they are uniting to make us not speak out. They are uniting to say a Yoruba is now uh, the flag bearer, so let us shut up. But the reverse is what they will get. They say, and the wholesale assertion of their freedom by, uh, by slaves was therefore discouraged. A slave freed by redemption was in native opinion and is in his own eyes truly a free man, while one who was arbitrarily emancipated by government unless for good cause or who asserted his freedom by dissertation was not. Redemption with the cooperation of the native courts was encouraged. So even though you have gotten your freedom, so this is what Lugard was saying, even though the slaves had gotten their freedom, they still need to go to the court and collect a paper to show that they are free. And then it goes on to the next paragraph, result of government policy. Generally speaking, it may be said that today there are no slaves in, most, in the Muslim states who are not well aware that they can assert their freedom if they so choose. So for those people who are saying Yoruba cannot assert their freedom, think again. We have the legal right. And now, a lot of people always think the right to self-determination was given to us by the United Nations. No, it was not given to us by the United Nations. It was give. It is a God-given right. The right to life. The moment you, you are born in this world, the moment they conceive you, you have a right to life and a right to decide your life. So it is not United Nations. So a lot of people have this conception that, oh, we will go and beg our politicians. We are not going to beg for our own right. And that is why the popular uh, musician uh, fella was singing that they can't dash me my human rights. You can't dash me my own property. How can you tell me I'm gifting you your own property? No, you can't gift me my property. You can gift me your own property, but you can't gift me my own property. So the right to self-determination, is it was only being enforced then. So he said, why all persons under 18 years of age are freeborn? In Sokoto, which received tribute in slaves, and where at the time, in its conquest in 1903, the great majority of the laboring class were slaves. So Lugard was saying now that Sokoto was not conquered until 1903. So when they said they amalgamated Nigeria in 1914, or the, the northern and southern Nigeria, northern and southern Nigeria in 1900 is different from the northern and southern Nigeria in 1914. But let's look at the opposite. Slavery in Southern Province. In fact, it was even very short because this is what Lugard wrote. In the Southern Provinces, the new slavery ordinance decreed the emancipation of all persons, year for or hereafter born in or brought into the country. A decree of emancipation justified by the successive enactments against slavery in past years, and by the fact that Muslim law, which recognized this institution, is not applicable in any part of the southern province. So the Muslim laws that recognized slavery in the north was not applicable in any part of the southern province in Nigeria. It wasn't, they didn't call it Nigeria in 1900. It didn't have a name. The name didn't come until 1914. But they will tell you Nigeria and Nigeria and Nigeria and Nigeria. And a lot of people want to die for what they don't know. Nigeria is not our father's property. Nigeria is the creation of Lugard. Nigeria is the great creation of the British imperial system. And we are not slaves. And so those who are waiting that we should go hand in cap to beg Buhari or the uh, House of Assembly or House of Senate or the whatever stupid institutions that they have set up. No, we are not going to do that. We, the Yorubas, are leaving Nigeria and we are leaving it for good. And we will enact and set up our own systems that will be free, fair, fairer, and provide justice for everyone, both kings and subjects in Yoruba land. Thank you. God bless you.